everyone. Um, there's nothing like eating soup, soup dumpling when it's raining outside like it is right now. And uh, also known as Sha Long Bao. Um, it was one of my favorite dishes to eat before I became vegan. I haven't found any restaurants that mix this vegan. So today I'm going to show you how to make it vegan and I hope you have fun. <laughs> let's get to work and uh, let's start with the dough, okay? So in here I have 360 grams of all-purpose flour and I'm going to add about 120 grams of hot water. So we use hot water partially to get the dough kind of cooked a little because what the hot water will do is that um, it will um, make the starches firm up in this dough and so as we're putting uh, soupy filling into it, even though the, the, the soup is cold, this uh, dough will be able to hold it without falling apart. So once the um, hot water is pretty much incorporated with this chopstick, I'm going to add about 70 grams of cold water. So kind of work it in with the chopsticks. And then once it's basically incorporated enough, just use your hand and start gathering up the dough. If you happen to have like a, a mixer, uh, you can do this with the mixer. But for a small dough like this, I just like to go by hand. So if it needs a little more water, you just add a little more. And the consistency that you're looking for is that it becomes a dough without being sticky. So it may feel sticky in your hand because there's po pockets of water that hasn't been incorporated yet. So once it comes together like this, becomes a dough you're just gonna push your palm into the dough as you're pulling the pulling it in half and kind of like pushing the dough into itself and so this is a proper consistency so when the dough is nice and uh, even you can see that it's well hydrated but it's not sticky in my hands Now if your dough is crumbly then that means you need more water. Now, and if your dough kind of like gets really wet and it sticks to your hand that means you have too much water in the dough. So once you're, you need the dough, you don't need to knead it for too long because um, we're going to need to let this rest so that it becomes a nice smooth dough. The process is also called auto lease. So we're going to kind of like a form into like a cylindrical, <laughs> we're going to form it into a cylindrical shape. We're going to cover it, tightly wrap it with plastic wrap. We're gonna let it rest for half an hour. 200 grams of texture vegetable protein, and I added 250 grams of water, and I just let that sit in here to let it reconstitute. Then I added thinly sliced green onions, about three stalks, then one tablespoon of soy sauce. about a tablespoon of rice wine 
quarter teaspoon of black pepper. You can use white pepper if you want, but I just don't like the taste of white pepper. And then quarter teaspoon of salt and that's it. And then you just mix it up. Oh yeah, and ginger. <laughs> About two teaspoon of ground ginger. But I, if you don't like the taste of ginger, you can omit it. Ginger was at ginger is added in this dish usually because uh, originally this dish is made with ground pork to kind of like take away that porky flavor, you know, that strong gamey, not gamey, but like that pork flavor. So ginger cuts down and makes makes it taste better. So if you don't like ginger, um, you can take it out. I like adding it in here because this also the textured vegetable protein has a little bit of a kind of like a flavor you can taste the soy flavor if you're not used if you're not used to it you know it can help improve the flavor so I, I would recommend putting in the ginger so our our stock is boiling coming to a boil So as you see, it's coming to a boil and you just want to make sure, bring it to a boil for about a minute because you just want to make sure all the, the agar agar melts. It's come to a boil, so we're gonna pour it right into. It's come to a boil, so we're gonna put it onto an, uh, a bowl that's on top of an ice bath. And then we're just gonna let this chill. So if you have room in your freezer, you can just stick this right into the freezer, but. My freezer is like full of stuff.
Okay, so it's been about five minutes and I, I changed out the ice again because it melted. And if you have time to baby it like this, you can kind of like scrape the bottom as it firms up. And you'll see like, uh, you see it firming up like jello, pieces like this. Okay, that's what you want. And if you don't have time to baby it, you just leave it alone. And then later on, you'll just have to break it up with a fork. So it's been less than five minutes since the, the scraping. And you see how it's starting to gelatinize. So total 15 minutes. So I'm gonna let it sit for another five minutes and it should be pretty cool. And just kind of change the ice bath on the bottom if you need to. So this is our um, aspic made from agar agar. And you see how it became like this. We're gonna add it to our filling. And mix it in well. So now that we have our filling ready, we're gonna take our dough that's been rested. And we're going to kind of like knead it once. Just to, you see how smooth this become? I just barely touched it. So we're gonna roll it into a log. That's why we kept it in a cylindrical shape. Now we're going to cut it into little pieces. Try to give it, get it all even in diameter and we're going to just cut these into This is the baker in me that's like, this is how we usually do um, rolls. So this one made about, let me see, let's count, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. This made about 30 pieces of, um, of the, the, one, the Shalom Bob skin. So once you have it cut up like this, you're going to kind of like try to keep it as round as you can. Because when you roll it out, it's kind of important and kind of flatten it with your palm and kind of lay it on top of each other. So you know that the dough is right when it's not sticking together when they're like this. Try to keep it as round as possible. So once they're flattened out, you're going to keep it covered so it doesn't dry out. Take a little bit of flour. Then have these little uh, rolling pin you can pick up at the Asian market. And basically you're going to roll to the middle, rotate, roll to the middle. 
and try to get it as close to a round shape as you can. I'm still new at this, so I'm not that good either. So like the real like dumpling masters will get it one done in like a few seconds. And roll it as thin as you can. Okay, so once you have one rolled out, I also have a steamer basket with some parchment. So I'm gonna eat this today. <laughs> so you're gonna take the wrapper you just rolled out and you're gonna take about... This is about a tablespoon, but it depends on how big you roll the dough out. So you want about an inch and a half of dough on the outside free. You're gonna bring it to the middle, pinch, then pinch like this and keep rotating. And you're gonna move down. And traditionally, you're supposed to have about 18 pinches, but I'm just glad the shape is kind of coming out. <laughs> so this one I put a little too much. It's okay, you can pull it out like this. It's a little ugly, but <laughs> it's, it's my second time making this. Again, we're going to take another piece of dough. If it's sticking a little, then you just add a little more flour on the bottom. Okay. Make it as thin as you can, because once it cooks up, the dough gets uh, a little thicker because of the water. Okay. So again, take it to the middle, then you're going to pinch. And you're kind of twisting and you're moving in a um, circle counterclockwise so that this will kind of like lean all the way around okay this one's a little better and then I pinch it at the end So that hot, when you're making this dough, hot water is crucial because if you don't, it will never get this thin and it will be too delicate and it may like fall apart right away when you try to handle it. That's my cat talking to me. She's in, she's in a tension whore. <laughs> So, again, just put a little bit. So, all this aspic in here, once you steam it, it's gonna turn into water. And it's gonna be delicious. Yes, Samantha. <laughs> no, you can't have this. a lot better I think. <laughs> now do they all look the same? <laughs> but 
It's kind of fun. So when you roll it like this, it gets really thin on the outside and then a little bit thicker on the inside. It's a little bit thicker on the inside and it, that's good because you, you don't want the soup to like if it's too thin it might break on the bottom as you take it off the basket or the parchment that there's cut. So you pinch and pull. getting a little faster. <laughs> And you see how the shape is kind of like holding up? But once it steams, it's gonna kind of like fall because the soup will dissolve and the, it will lose its shape a little. That's why when you go to dip some places, you'll see um, it often being uh, steamed in the basket with little foil cups to hold its shape. So if you don't like textured vegetable protein, you can also uh, chop some mushroom up, kind of make a duck cell without any of the herbs. Duck cell is like chopped mushrooms, usually uh, sweated to evaporate the moisture. And you can use uh, that instead of textured vegetable protein if you want. Um, just plain white button mushroom should work really well. If you wanted to add more flavor to it, you can add shiitake to it, or you can do like a medley of mixed mushrooms and kind of chop it up.
so if you're not gonna eat this all at once what you can do is you can uh, get a cookie sheet or a sheet tray and you're gonna line it with parchment paper if you don't have parchment paper you can use wax paper just line it up on the, uh, on the uh, cookie sheet and throw it into the freezer and then once it freezes and then you take the uh, individual just put it into a Ziploc bag and keep it in the freezer uh, in, a, in the Ziploc bag that's airtight. And when you need to um, steam this, just put it in a steam basket and steam it for about 8 to 10 minutes. steam this you just take some um, Chinese red vinegar or black vinegar with some really uh, finely chiffonade like ginger and that's it I'm gonna choose a tea to drink with this and I feel like having some oolong tea which is one of my favorite ah here this is a good one monkey pick oolong Put a little since I don't like my tea super strong. And I like this tea, tea kettle or hot water kettle because you can set it to different temperatures and for tea you don't want it boiling so I send it to 195 degrees and I'll get I'll make the perfect tea
Okay, so we have our homemade vegan shalom barrel. You see how the shape is kind of like coming down a little? Because I'm about to look at all the liquid. So, I'm gonna pour myself some tea. Oh, it's gonna be too hot. I'm just gonna show you how much of the liquid that came out. It's not as, as like like the restaurant, but you can definitely tell there's liquid in there. I think it's because of the texture of vegetable protein. So you take some of the ginger. There's a good amount of liquid in there. <laughs> it's a long tea. <sighs> yeah, on a rainy day like this, this is perfect. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this. Encourage you to do it all, also. It's impressive, isn't it? Like if you can have some guests over and then you tell them you made this from scratch and it's vegan. All your vegan friends will be wanting to come to your house for um for a party. It's hot, so be careful. Delicious. Mm. I kind of want to cut one open. Texture vegetable protein. It, it has a mouthfeel of um, meat. See, you see the juice coming out of this one. Mm, delicious. I'm gonna put it back in. <laughs> it's some ginger. That ginger and that vinegar makes it very refreshing. You can also use Chinese black vinegar too, instead of red vinegar.
one shot. <laughs> as well as some of the mushroom flakes that you can get from the Asian um, store. I buy the ones that are uh, MSG free and it's all vegetable. Call it whole cake because it's a 
before you're eating it or you're gonna burn all your lip and your mouth and your tongue and the syrup will run all over you if you just go for it because it's so hot um, and most and recently um, in South Korea they started doing savory ones of that too made with the, um, the potato starch noodles uh, if you know Korean food you'll probably know what japchae is which is the Korean long rice and we'll make two versions of that in the next video we'll make um, the whole cake with the traditional um, brown sugar filling and then a savory one with the um, the sweet potato starch noodles it's gonna have some vegetables and it's gonna be delicious so stay tuned again like subscribe and share this video tell all your friends about it <laughs> and i'll see you next time